So in this video, we're going to talk about some knowledge discovery. Make sure you check your knowledge and see if you understand the capacitative facility location model. So as a reminder, in this uh, optimization model, we get to determine where should we locate, and then for open facilities, we allocate their um, resources to meet different demands. So my first question for you is, if capacity is not an issue, so we still need to decide where to open, but we, in any of those locations, capacity um, could handle all of the uh, customer demand. Do we still need constraint two in the capacitated facility location model? So as a reminder, uh, constraint two is given here. Um, constraint two, basically you sum up the XIJs, which is the amount shipped um, from I to J or produced from I to J. And for each uh, location I, I only have so much capacity and that's turned on by this YI, which is one if I build, zero if I don't. So the correct answer here is um, A, yes, we still need constraint two. So even if uh, this capacity thing is not really something we need to worry about, um, we have enough, we have plenty of capacity. So if I build, we'll be good. I don't need to care about the capacity aspect. We still need constraint two because we need to map, map X's and Y's. And so we need to um, map these two decision variables together because what will happen if you just ignore constraint two is you will fulfill demand um, without turning on the Y, and in the objective function, you won't pay for that fixed cost. And so if it's maybe the variable cost is really cheap, what will happen is you'll use the Xs from the cheap uh, variable cost without having to consider that maybe they're built in really expensive places. So the correct answer is yes, we still need constraint too. So what do you do um, if capacity is not an issue? What you should do is set KI to big M. And M is a number that's big enough. And so it should be a big number um, from a logical perspective, but from a solving perspective, it should be the biggest or the smallest big number you need, okay? And so it should be big enough. Okay, so what does all that mean? Let's just consider um, the example we did in Excel, um, and we have all these different demand locations. The biggest you would ever need is if one facility was built and all of the demand was satisfied from that. So if I sum up all of this, I get 56. And so what I should do is I should still have constraint two, but I should set uh, KI to 56 for all of them, and then solve it um, just as usual. So as a reminder, KI is an input parameter. Um, so you're not changing anything fundamentally about the model, but it is wrong uh, to delete uh, constraint two uh, because without it, you have no tying together the Y's and the X's in your optimization formulation. All right, so my next question for you is, how would our capacitated facility location model change if we restrict markets to be supplied from a single factory? And that's sometimes known as single sourcing. Um, so one thing you may ask, okay, why do you want to do single sourcing, especially in today's uh, age with COVID-19, by having a single source and something goes down, that's not a very resilient or robust supply chain. So it's typically not um, recommended. However, in some industries, it's required. Um, an example of that is in the Department of Defense. Um, sometimes for security reasons, they only have one uh, secure supplier, and so they single source that, that material. Um, other examples of this is in medical um, manufacturing and pharmaceutical manufacturing. You need the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, to approve um, and certify your manufacturing process. And sometimes um, to be able to do that, um, you, it incentivizes some single sourcing. And so oftentimes this is something that happens because of the type of product you make. And so a, a manager may say, what does that cost me? Um, for having a single um, source. And so you could build an optimization model to answer that question. If you did, what would have to change in our capacitative facility location problem? The correct answer, at least from how I modeled the problem, would be D. We need to have new constraints um, and we need to redefine um, our decision variables. And again, this is how I modeled this. Um, there's one thing to point out in optimization modeling is oftentimes there's many ways to model the same problem. Um, so why do I uh, select D is if you think about this problem, I could change how I define XIJ. So in the previous 
uh, model, xij was the quantity shipped from i to j. Now I just say it's a binary variable that says which facility supplies which market. And that's used with a one or zero binary uh, decision variable. So now we have both x, i, j, and y, i's that are binary. But we also need to adjust some stuff in the constraints and the objective function. So in the constraints, it says, remember, x, i, j is now binary. And it basically says one uh, facility has to supply each of these different um, demands. And the constraint on capacity has to change because the x's are now um, binary decision variable. So if I'm summing up over the x's, that doesn't represent the quantity coming out of a facility. So I need to incorporate the dj's into that to get the quantity. And now um, the right-hand side of this uh, constraint doesn't change. And so that enforces the capacity um, constraint. And so the other thing that needs to change in the objective function, the fixed charge part doesn't change. But again, because x's are binary, not quantity, we need to incorporate dj into them. Um, and so this is just an example of some tweaks we could do to the capacity of facility location model. Um, and there are other things you could think about uh, tweaking in terms of um, model formulations. All right, so my next question for you is that for a given input parameter values, what is the relationship between the objective function value of the capacitative facility location model that allows single or multiple sourcing versus the capacitative facility location that requires only single sourcing. One thing to remember is we are minimizing costs. So an objective function value that's small, that's good. So we want small um, values. So I'd encourage you to read through this. I know it's a little wordy. Pause the video and then come back and I'll explain uh, this to you. So the correct answer to this problem is B, that the single source objective value, function value will always be greater than or equal to the multiple source solution. So that said another way is the single sourced um, requirement will either be the same or worse in terms of a solution than the one that we can have single or multiple um, uh, sources. And so why? Um, the reason you could say that is, is that the single source problem is feasible to the one that could be either single or multiple. However, the reverse is not true. What I mean is if the optimal solution is to have two sources, so you are supplying a demand point from two points or more, that's no longer feasible to the single source one, which means you will have to get a worse objective. 